If you've been watching my channel, at least in my electronics part of it, you've probably figured out by now I have an affinity for supercapacitors. Different sizes, but I like playing with them. Well, today we're going to do a um, proof of concept to see if we can take a uh, regular rechargeable battery, such as in my little emergency radio. It normally comes with a regular two-wire connection. It's a nickel metal hydride 3.6 volt 600 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. So whenever you turn the dynamo or use a little solar panel on top of it, it recharges the internal battery. What we want to do is see how well it'll work running off of supercapacitors. Now I have two 10 farad, uh, two and a half volt supercapacitors here, wired in series, a little plug that I can mess with, giving us an effective five farads worth of capacitance. So we're going to take the internal battery out of the unit and plug this in and see what type of results we get. Okay, so here's the setup I got. Battery's been pulled out. I just got a lead going into the back of the unit over to the power bar of this proto board, or this breadboard. The positive and negative directly connected from the supercapacitor, which is right here. And then just two leads coming off go into the voltmeter so you see the power on the supercapacitor. Everything else on here, that's from another circuit I'm working on. It's not even connected. So right now we're sitting at 2.9 volts, and that is the low limit. That's where the cutoff is for this unit to stop operating. So what we're going to do now is charge it on up to 5 volts to the maximum capacity of the supercapacitors, and it should take me roughly about 30 seconds to go from 2.9 the 5 volts. You also see the charge indicator on the screen itself in the upper right hand corner blinking away. Now this thing will consider a fully charged battery at about 4.3 volts and it will stop animating the little LCD graphic. But we're going to keep on going all the way up to 5 volts because it will tolerate the extra voltage. And of course, as the voltage goes up on the supercapacitor, it gets easier and easier to crank this. It's not taking as much amperage. Let's go over just a little bit just to handle the uh, leakage in the supercapacitor. And there we go. 5 volts, roughly about 30 seconds or so. Okay, so now we're going to see how long it takes for the discharge. So, I've got my little phone here set up. I'm going to turn on the radio and see how long it takes to discharge down to 2.9 volts where it will automatically shut itself off. So, here we go. And there you go, about two and a half minutes roughly. So it's roughly two and a half farads uh, effective power because unfortunately we're only using about half of the capacitance. Remember, this is a five farad supercapacitor setup right here. And since we're not discharging all the way down to zero, we're only discharging about halfway until the unit shuts off. We're only using half of that five farads. So effectively, two and a half farads will give you two and a half minutes worth of run time. So, if you size your unit appropriately and, say, go completely overkill and put two of these 350 farads that are running at 2.7 in series and charge them up to uh, 5 volts, yet yeah, you're going to get at least a good half hour or if not more of runtime. It will take more than 30 seconds to crank them, up, crank them up and charge them up the rest of the way. 
Now, I'd love to actually do that test for you, but unfortunately I only have one of these right now. I can't get a second one for a little while. They're on back order. So, but there you go. That goes to show you that you can actually use supercapacitors to recharge real easy. And once again, it just picks up. It goes up really quick. And of course, the faster you crank, the faster you're going to charge it. If you really go crazy, you can probably have it charged in less than 30 seconds. As long as you don't burn out the dynam the uh, burn out the crank in the process. Voila, there we go. That was about 15, 20 seconds or so, and it held most of the charge, and we keep on going. If you try cranking like that with a regular battery, since the internal resistance is so much higher than in a supercapacitor, you will have gotten a fraction of that charge actually absorbed into here. So, for 30 seconds worth of cranking, you might have gotten like a minute's worth of playtime out of these batteries versus two and a half out of a supercapacitor. So, thanks very much, and um, have fun, and don't shock yourself too much playing.